Welcome to another episode of El Maestro Speaks Podcast. Find any inspiration in this uh, we have done and you have done your novel part. Uh. El Maestro Speaks Podcast. Hello, 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 hello once again. El Maestro Speaks Podcast. Before we move on, I would just like to thank my supporters here who are always here helping us go through with this podcast we have money mono floors poultry located at mankai and we get selling fresh eggs so if you want to have fresh eggs from the poultry for those who are people located there at mankai and we get you can always check them at their facebook page mono floors egg poultry of course uh, he's still in mankai and we have sai space tech you can always contact them if you have some computer problems they do home servicing for your computer software or hardware and of course we have they're going up from one kind going up to a button we have jtech formerly millennial tech located at kubu building a button book yes building uh, uh, you can always visit them they repair cell phones and laptops and they also install cctv cameras and going to La Trinidad, we have here the St. Lucie Multipurpose Cooperative, a Mankayan branch, and they also have their sub office here at Pugis La Trinidad Binget. Most of the time, that's where we do the podcast if we have guests. And of course, we also have here Dems Auto Performance. An auto shop located at Alapang Latrinda Benguet for your car troubles. Thank you so much. And now, to you listeners, <laughs> I want to say thank you for always listening. Um, what are the demographics here? All right, so, of course, here in the Philippines. Thank you so much. And to the United States of America. I do not know that there are some people listening there. Yeah, thank you for listening. There is a lot of podcasts there, but uh, you kind of uh, stumbled into this podcast. And I thank you for listening. We also have people in Canada, in Hong Kong, and in South Korea. I, I would hope that or I think the people listening in Hong Kong are our fellow Kababayans, or it's just the same with the other countries, maybe fellow Igrots or Filipinos who are working there. And uh, yeah, uh, you are considered as the new heroes of our country. So um, may God's protection be upon you all. So things we need to talk about today. What do you think? <laughs> oh, it's there the title about honoring your parents yeah oh Oh, speaking of olympic fever right so olympics or the paris 2024 olympics is now done so for the philippines we have like uh two gold medals and some other medals and brought home by those amazing 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 athletes uh, that did their best whether they have like a full support from the government or not or whether they have like a full equipment or not they did their best to represent their country we want to poke holes here about the government's services or yeah services to our athletes especially when they're competing but yeah it is what it is sometimes yeah, we we've heard stories of uh i don't know um it's is it because of lack of budget or you know uh, there is a uh, like less interest by some private companies to sponsor this sports and like basketball when you when we talk about basketball here in the Philippines, you know, even private companies will 
sponsor them. Yeah, and just look at the record of the basketball teams. Um, they were able to go to some high competitions, but not as able to grab medals. That's that's in the realms of impossible. Yeah, impossibility. Just honestly speaking, oh, maybe if the Philippines can win a gold medal in the Olympics, that will be like a uh, prayer answered, and it's a miracle of some sort. Now, the other sports, though we are dealing on it, um, I don't know why the support, especially on financial financial support for the trainings and uh, their needs while they're preparing, is very difficult to arrive. You know, again, I don't want to poke holes on uh, what's happening in our government system, but like what I said a while ago, it is what it is. It, what's important is this athletes, despite of those trials, challenges, were able to make our nation proud. So, you know, what's happening now? What's happening now? What's happening now? A lot of things has happened, you know, Olympics with that issue of uh, those women, women with the XY chromosome. I don't know how women can have that. Well, we are not a doctor, so we don't know, but perhaps we can, if we have a doctor in this podcast, we can ask them about this issue. And, uh, and the, the opening ceremony, sort of like a drag show. Ah, uh, yeah, those things happen. The Australian breakdance. <laughs> this, I don't know if you call it a break dance. I've, I'm not if I I don't watch a lot of break dancing, but I've seen I've seen better performance compared to, to what I saw. At least the the ones that were cut. I didn't see the complete video, but at least the ones that were shown by some of the social media users, uh, the ones that were shown on the internet. I've seen better performance than that. And just recently going local, I saw a post by a certain uh, the title. I mean, if you can, if you want to check yourself, um, the one who shared it is just check my Facebook here. It's about indigenous people again. So bear with me for those who are listening having the commute riding on a train something like that <laughs> i'm just trying to open my facebook here just to double check who shared the post um well itas okay oh sorry we don't have internet do i not have internet here anyway I think it was posted by a certain, um, what's the name again? Singing Igorot. The one who posted it is Singing Igorot. And it's about a book. It's, it's written by someone who has a PhD. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the one author's uh, family name is Isip, which means uh, think. So, what content of the book is about, accordingly, Aitas live in Ifugao. Now, Ifugao, again, for those that doesn't know it, Ifugao is a place in the Cordillera Mountains where Ifugaos live. Okay? Now, we're trying to, or trying to, like, group all the peoples in the Cordillera Mountains. Igorots. So, you know, uh, there is no Aita. Aitas don't live in Ifugao. But according to the book, Aitas can be found in Ifugao. So just recently, like two, three weeks ago, we have this 
issue about a certain um, rich woman who bought a house at Itogon saying that uh, the Bulol or Bulor, I don't know how to pronounce that one, that uh, Nifugo artifact again, is created by Itis. So I'm just trying to connect the 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 um what do you call this one the situation here that what happened here and I would say maybe she read that book and if that's where she took her information we really cannot blame her maybe we will blame the ones who wrote the book right oh think of it. Uh, the author has a PhD that will only show you that, you know, <laughs> having that title will not hear your ignorance sometimes. And they have to do more of researching before they can write their book. Now, that book is not just for, you know, I mean, that book. I don't, I don't know how it was published without proper proofreading, but that book, I saw a stamp on it, and it is in the Cavite State University Library. All right. So it was, it was stamped as the, a book from that library, which means a lot of students and been using that book since it came there a lot of students has been using that book as a reference so imagine just imagine the number of students that was misled by this book yeah for sure the numbers are big you know and imagine if these students got I mean, have read this book, they used this as their reference. Imagine the number of people <laughs> that they can influence also. Teaching the wrong information that they took from this book. You know, it's a sad, sad situation. <laughs> and like I said before, that square of influencers we, and we do have a lot of influencers here in the Cordilleras will come in to clarify those things. That's, that's how we can fight this wrong information being, you know, being taught in the academe. Just imagine that in a university, <laughs> a university. So that's when, that's, that's when the influencers will come in and just show the stories of their plays. You know, you, you can, you, if you're listening right now, you can start your own talking about your culture. And like I said last time, I encourage the, the itis also. It's so easy. It's so easy to create like contents now and just post it on Facebook. You can just take a video on your phone, no matter what kind of phone that is. You can just make a video, talk about your culture, share it. And you can tag me and I can also share it with our fellow listeners here of this podcast. You know, that is the only way. That's the only, and I think the most effective way since like most of the young generations now are so enamored with watching videos on TikTok and I mean doing research in Google rather than going to the library. I mean, in a way, we should be thankful for that, right? <laughs> because maybe few few students on these later years have used the book, but still, that was that is a published reference for students and it has a wrong information in it. Things we need to do, like I said, is to come out through the social platforms 
and be proud of our culture. Okay? Be proud of our culture as indigenous people. No matter who you are, you may be you're a Mangyan, you're a you're a Negro, whatever, you're an Aita. Be proud of who you are. Come out, talk about your culture, share it to the world. Okay? That's how we can use uh, social media in a good way instead of just you know i i'm quite disappointed sometimes with social media because if you look at the contents and mostly these contents are the ones getting traction i mean they're the ones making more views more likes and more shares okay um like they say yeah maybe it's for good vibes things like that but sometimes it's those nonsense posts that will get the traction. But it's okay. It's okay. Okay. As long as you post your video, you post your video, talk about your culture. You might not get views now, but it's already there. Like what we say, always say, once it's in the internet, it's going to be forever. So your post may not get traction now, but two or three years later, it will okay and it might get shares a lot of shares like that and um it's not about the money but it's about the information that you can share to the world about your culture that matters and that's why i do really encourage a lot of people say it in your language if you're going to speak in tagalog you say it in the, say it in your language share it in your language someone will come maybe in later in the future to translate it okay as long as you can share what you want to share to the world, okay? you can share the content of your heart about your culture. And that is what really matters. You know, indigenous people, right? So <clears throat> like what I'm saying a while ago that uh, there's really a need, okay? to give, oh, what's happening to my camera? Let me just check that one. There's really a need, anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're, we're more concerned about the audio here because it's a podcast, but uh, my camera seems to be closing a little bit. Okay. Anyway, uh, there's really a need for us to use you know, social media to educate people about our culture. But <clears throat> sometimes I, the, the culture that we have is like being used to gain, you know, you know monetary, monetary favor from people or from the company that do this uh, social media platform. Um, what I mean is that uh, so here's the situation. I saw one certain, uh, I just, I don't want to name him, but anyway, I saw someone who is sharing. I look at his um, Facebook um, page or the account that he is using. And most of the, the content that he shares, the posts that he shares are about indigenous people. Not just here in the Philippines, but indigenous people entire entire in the world. Now it's I don't know. It's the general truth that indigenous people in the world are sometimes um, okay uh, treated differently. Okay, for lack of a better term, okay, they're treated differently, almost like forgotten. Okay, in a certain ways. And uh, that's why we have the IP laws here in the Philippines, right? And I think in other countries also, for the governments to recognize the rights of the indigenous people, right? And um, like I said a while ago, all the IPs, IPs should come out, use the social media, so that we can introduce ourselves to the world. It's a good thing. Now... The negative side of it, I guess, is that some people might be using this to bait 
the IPs into liking a post that they did not understand enough to like. Um, an example of this, like I like, um, we have this, let's just say this is a, like a Pinoy baiting, for example. Now let's change the word Pinoy or Filipino baiting, wherein content creators will create a content and just put Filipino on it on the thumbnails and then Filipinos will click on it and then just like it something like that and it's I think the the post that I saw the guy's post that I saw is similar to that one it is an IP or indigenous people's baiting in a sense that he is posting a lot of things about indigenous people and he showed his status and it, yeah it's gaining traction a lot of it and the problem I have with it is that the information, again, same with the book a lot while ago, same with the book that had published wrong information. The information that she or he had on his post are somewhat erroneous, even the pictures that he used. Okay, well, at least for the post that I saw. Uh, I cannot speak for the other tribes and other indigenous people, but for the post that I saw a while ago about the Benguet Kankanai, first and foremost, the picture that he used is not from Benguet Kankanai, because if you see the 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 patterns of the dress, it's for the mountain province side of the Cordillera, and the second one is that on the the text or the article that was included in the picture is that on the modern challenge part for the e Kankanai women, accordingly, the women of Kankanai have limited access to education. That's what it said. Okay, that's what he posted. So if I am just just imagine the scenario. If I am a foreigner trying to learn about Benguet Kankanai, I would take this information as a current information happening right now. So if you were that, you would believe that. And <laughs> actually, it is wrong. Okay, that I I'm not sure if this is true in the earlier days, but as far as I know. In the indigenous ways of the Kankana, they always give regards to their women. Of course, we have different roles in the society. Men and women have different roles in the society, but they do not limit. They do not limit the women if they want to go have education. And uh, as of current or as of nowadays, a lot of Benguet Kankana women are lawyers not lawyers they're they're all professionals most of them are professionals i don't know her he got this uh, modern challenge uh statement but it is wrong in so many levels and what i want to what i want to uh tell here or what i want to point out is that it is okay i'm not I'm not telling that it's okay that you can post or he whoever that guy is can post about indigenous people nobody's asking i'm not asking him to stop it but i want him to like research do and scrutinize the information that he is posting make sure that it is up to date right because oh i've seen his reach and it, it can reach a lot of people maybe the the reach of his post is wider than the reach of the book that we discussed a while ago and if you are posting an outdated information and uh, with uh, in connection to that one, I wouldn't say that it's updated. I would say it's really erroneous in a way. Okay. 
because you know I am a Kankanai and I uh, based on what I heard from my grandparents I, I wouldn't say that women have the limited access to education okay they are free to do what they want they get they are you actually they are encouraged to have a higher education anyway so yeah that's my advice to him if you're listening and, and you know that you are the one or your account is the one i'm talking about then please do improve do not just copy paste things and for our ip people i i know that i've been we've been like suppressed for a long time and we're longing to be recognized around the world but <clears throat> before you like the post be before you like it let me say i advise you to scrutinize the post before liking it or before leaving the comment of like i'm proud to be a nigger things like that just an example okay before you do that i urge you to read the post i mean if that's a video listen to it scrutinize it okay read the post understand it before liking it do not just like it because oh they're posting about egorots they're posting about you have to scrutinize it so that we can safeguard we are the ones the ip people we are the ones well we are we should be the one guarding the information being spread about us right do not just like or share it without thinking without even reading it we gotta we gotta guard the information that's being spread about us please so before you like or before you comment please scrutinize the post well so like I said, I categorize this as an IP baiting, the indigenous people baiting, since like it's there's less research done for it to be a credible post. And <clears throat> people might say, oh, I think you're doing the same because you keep on talking about your culture in this podcast. Well, maybe, but I am doing. I am doing this because with the aim that we are going to be recognized. I mean, you know, the struggles of the IP. And as an IP, I really like, I would like the world to know more about us, especially so that there's a lot of wrong information being wrote, written about us. So uh, I don't know if I'm baiting, but I'm trying to let people know about my culture and of course i may be giving some wrong informations along the way and i want people to forgive me for that but the thing is that's the reason why i always defer to people who are more knowledgeable than me all right so if you can see for my past previous episode i really have to if there are things that i don't know and most of them, I don't know about the culture of Igor. Most of them, I, I'm not I'm not familiar with them because of the way I was uh, brought up. But I always defer to the people more knowledgeable than me. That's what I do. Because like I said, I want the real information about this to be shown to the world. Copying and posting, you know information copying old research taking pictures of indigenous people and posting it and without doing like uh additional research to like um give new information about the indigenous people that is ip baiting you're just baiting people to like your post because maybe they thought you're doing it for um you know spreading awareness about the ips that's ip baiting and i uh, i believe it i believe it's not doing um good to the ips it's in fact i think it's 
um, doing worse. I mean, giving bad light to uh, how people view the eyepiece. Okay, so uh, should we stop it? Should we report it now? He is as is a as a citizen of a free country. I would say he is free to do what he wants to post there and still the only way to rebut that is for us also indigenous people to create our own post about our own culture showing the world the correct information about us you know that's the only way we can come okay this you know wrong information about us And for the last part, the one you're looking at your, <laughs> the one you're looking at your screen, if, the, if you are watching this one, honoring your parents about the Carlos Yulo. All right. So, uh, like I said, are we that hungry for recognition that we really sometimes just let go of uh, um, human frailties and then ear errors just to you know adore those people who brought us the glory <laughs> i don't know if i'm asking the right question here but um just going straight to the point honoring your parents i would go for that uh the Carlos Yulu thing of uh, about his uh, like uh, dispute with her mother. I mean, sorry, with his mother. Your um, we should always remember. Okay, despite of all those things, uh, we should always honor our parents. Of course, honoring your parents won't mean that you have to just obey them something like that um uh, carlos yo i think is old enough he is 18 i guess is he 18 <laughs> i don't follow olympics i mean i don't follow this news at all um just heard about it because of you know the olympics anyway if he is 18 he is free to choose what he wants to do but um doing what you want to do won't mean that you're not honoring your mother right so uh yeah um uh, with regards to what their dispute is i really don't care but <clears throat> families always have arguments right disagreements with each other but at the end of the day those things will like go away it will solve itself because you know what whatever happens um that guy is still your child and you know the woman is still your mother and you're gonna patch things up sooner or later right now his case is very unique because the <laughs> the argument came i mean was brought up in public and yeah uh, it was brought up in public and like a lot of know it all people gave advice things like that a lot of people gave their opinion uh we, well we cannot blame them because again like i said he is in public and uh the the opinion of a certain attorney drew will read Rodriguez Diaz and uh, like uh, came it went viral in a way because he said I don't how did he say it he said uh, I do not respect Hulo or because of what he did to his mother or something like that I'm paraphrasing here it's like he does not admire Hulo's uh, Yulo because of what he did to his mother like uh, something like that I guess well anyway 
um, his point here is that uh, we should always honor our mother and uh, obey them in a way because that is in the Bible. That's commandment from God. And I would I agree with him in some sense. But then um, some people called him out saying that that is a toxic Filipino culture, which made me shocked because, oh, no, uh, giving respect to your parents now, a toxic culture <laughs> about that. Uh, some people are pointing out that because what if your mother did something to you, like uh, forced you into prostitution, abused you, things like that, are you still going to honor her? Or your parents did that to you? Are you still going to honor them? Well, that's a different story. And that's why we have laws about that one, right? And still, um, in a general sense, there is no parent in the world who would wish ill for their children. That's where I'm going at with this. That's why it's very important for us to honor our parents. And at the same time, whether... Whether you're a Catholic, a Christian, a Muslim, or a Buddhist, or a pagan for that matter, okay, the, the rule of morality always dictates that we should honor our parents, right? For good karma, if you're a Buddha, okay? And because it's right if you're a Christian or a Muslim. And the wisdom of the, that is an old age wisdom, I should say, that we have to honor our parents. Okay, honoring them doesn't mean that you'll have to agree with them all the time. We can disagree with our parents, we can disobey them. Okay, they might get mad at us, but they will always love us for sure and of course for you you will always love them of course it's normal for human to have the emotion of oh my god you're i'm mad at you now okay it's it's normal for a son to get mad at her mom okay but that will come or that will pass soon okay that will subside soon that will be gone soon and they will patch things up so I'd rather if and if you're a netizen or you a netizen, 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 of course. <laughs> or if you're or someone who's watching this story unfold right before your eyes, you'd rather shut up, let it let it go its natural course, and just pray that both of them will patch things up okay, to finish the issue. Um, it might not be now, you know, like, let's just say years from now, decades later, okay, the son will soon realize how important the mom is in his life, okay, just, I don't know, um, maybe the mother did something that's wrong, uh, things like Spending the son's money, things like that. Okay. Like uh, <laughs> we have this uh, sense of gratitude thing in our Filipino culture. And maybe the parent is like uh, saying that the, the child has no like, sense of gratitude towards his parents. Um, like guilt tripping the child to give all his earnings to the parents, something like that. Okay. And that's not good at all. Yeah, I understand. But, you know, uh, you can patch things up. They can patch things up. And don't ever forget that humans, I mean, parents are humans too. They make mistake. They make mistake. And if they make mistake, they can atone for that mistake. They can fix that mistake. And so with a child. Okay. And 
the main objective here, the main objective that we should have here as a fan of Carlos Iulo is that we should help fix the family. Okay? We should help them fix their family. If you're really a fan of Carlos Iulo, that should be the sole objective of you right now. Help Carlos Iulo fix his family. Okay? Have a I mean, patch things up with his mom. If you cannot help him, you should pray for him or for them. And I, I, I didn't like the, there's one Nico David who is a, I don't know, he's doing like a podcast also on YouTube who used the word trap card. The honoring your mother accordingly, despite what he did or she did to you. Honoring your parents despite what they did to you is a trap card that will trap you into the uh, into the into the hole of or into the room of being abused. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know where people get this idea of trap cards and uh, stuff, but I'd say. We cannot beat like the old age wisdom of uh, old people has already told us. We should do that and good things will come to us. So if, say for example, you're honoring your parents and your parents are not reciprocating it or they're still abusing you, then that's on them. At least you did your part as a child of honoring them, respecting them, and loving them unconditionally. That's the word here. We should love our parents unconditionally. Okay? And I would say most of parents also love this unconditionally. Right? Just remember the sleepless nights. Well, it's, this is not guilt tripping, but just remember the sleepless nights that they is sacrificed for you when you were a baby. Things like that. The sacrifices they made so you can have food at your table. So Carlos can have good training to become the gymnast that he is today. You know? So instead of gaslighting, like gaslighting, why am I using those terms? instead of gaslighting uh them i mean do yeah like what is that do uh, telling you to do do what he wants to do you don't need to reconcile with the mother i i think the better thing that we should do is to pray for them that uh they will patch things soon sooner than later rather than telling them to like cut the relationship right there that's not that's not how i mean that's not how family works family has or will always have disagreements will always have fights and if they have fights it's often chaotic and at the end of the day they're still family and they will always patch things up so let's just, let's stay out of that topic Okay, just let's just let them patch things up, talk about it, and let's stay out of it. I think that's my opinion of the matter. You know what's happening now. And again, honoring our parents will always put us in the good side of life. Always, no matter what, honoring our parents are elders and that's the culture that we're known for filipinos are known for that why are we trying to make it as a trap card i don't know so i'm not as genius and as eloquent as the others who are explaining this thing here but that's my opinion we should honor our parents that will always put us in the good side of life no matter what all right, so I've been talking here long enough, I think, already. So <laughs> I say, 
Thank you for listening. Okay. Always pray. And, you know, I always wish you blessing and good health. So thank you, everyone, for listening. Bye-bye.